Welcome back. It's been a busy couple of weeks, but we're going to pick up here today following up on T apply with using S apply and just a little bit L apply. So uh, if you're following along in the book, this is starting uh, up on page 65. And what we're looking at is ways to do similar things from uh, using a for loop and then more simply with the uh, T apply or in this case S apply and then L apply functions. So uh, using the for loop, this is the way that it could set up. We could do another dot list and this is just uh, giving it the name of a variable. And then I'll make a list that has elements that are all different lengths. Six, and the spaces don't matter in this, so I'm not actually being too consistent. Uh, just going quickly. So we'll run that. We've made another list, and it's a list of four. We'll look at it and see what it looks like. So we have a list down here. One, another list has two elements, another list vector with three, another uh, vector with four. So seeing what we can do with this list uh, with a for loop, I'll set this up just as he does, giving it a variable name called lengths, and then creating an empty vector. And uh, it starts off, we can see here, with a logical empty vector, but when we put something into it, it actually changes into whatever we fill it with. So we'll do a for loop, same way that we've done before, from one to the length of another list. And then curly brackets. And then we're going to put into, for each element, uh, our vector lengths, the length of another list of each element in list, and that'll be it. So since I like to figure out what the loop is going to do before I do it, I'm going to make a little room up here and see. Uh, right now, we can see that length has nothing in it, uh, the length of up to the length of another list. There's four elements in it, so it should be four. We can just test it out, the length of another list. So it's going to go through the for loop four times. So starting with the first one, it should give us the length of the first element. The length of the second element, the length of the third element, the length of the fourth element. So if we wanted to see what the length of the first one would be, we could test it out and say, well, suppose that we wanted to, we'll just give ourselves another one to play with and say we were going to put into A, make it a vector, and run it. So now we have an empty vector A, and say for A, the first element, we wanted to put in the length of another list, the first element. So this is just testing out for myself without messing with the for loop elements what would happen. So this should give us the length of this element, which should be 1. Let's test it out. So length, looks like the length is 1. Let's just see what A is, and there it is. Let's go ahead and run our for loop, and turn lengths into an integer vector with 1, 2, 3, and 4. Excellent. So what we're doing with S apply is uh, this is a simple apply. So what it seems to do is coerce the output of this function into a vector format. Uh, so it will give us a vector similar to what we did with the for loop. 
So the first element is going to be the vector or the list that we want to work with, and we want to apply to each element in that list length. And let's run it. So just in one simple statement, it applied it and gave us to a vector. So if we wanted to put this into a vector, so we could say a, now we have a all in one line. So suppose that we wanted to do that to find all the first elements in a list. Again, we're doing this along with the same thing that he's doing. We're on page 66 now. So we're creating an empty vector first. If we did this with a for loop, we do this for the length of another list again. Open our brackets. So for our new counter, our new vector that we're creating, we're going to put into this the first element, which is another list. Oops, square bracket. So the first one, and then we want the first element. And then if we want to, when we're done, see what ends up in first elements, then we can run that. So we'll go through. Looks like from here, something didn't do what I was expecting. That didn't happen. What if we start off? All right, it's a logical vector for i in, oh, I said i rather than 1. We want it to count from 1 to the length, so we'll run that again. And this gave us our first element in each of the lists. And if we want to look at another list again to see what it gave us, so it gave us the first element in each of our list. So what S apply can let us do applying a function to each list, each element in the list, is again, we do another list. And this was an interesting one that I had not used before, is putting the open bracket is letting us subset. So a single square bracket lets us look at a subset. And uh, since we are, uh, since it takes a third element, we can say we want the first element of that. So we're accessing a subset of elements, and we want the first element from that. So we go ahead and run it, and we see that it gave us the same thing as our for loop. So it was taking the first element from each of our list elements. So moving on to doing this with L apply, and this will be the last one for right now. So we're going to reassign what's in A and say we're going to have some disordered elements, numbers, and then we're going to assign to B, 2, 6, and 4. And then we want to see this, which is the parentheses um, means that it'll write it to our screen immediately. And we're going to make this into a list, A and B. Somewhere I didn't, oh, we're saying C because we want to put these together. Run it again. So we see our list here that we've created in A, B. If we look up here, we have a list of two. And then if we want to L apply A and B, and the function that we want to apply to it is sort. And because sort takes another 
argument um, to if we don't want the default. So we're going to do decreasing is false, and that's passed on to the sort. And so the, one of the biggest differences that I see between L apply and the S for the simple apply is that it returns the type of either the list or vector that we gave it. So it'll return a list rather than a vector this time because uh, AB is a list. So there we see what it returned. And just because it's interesting to see that happening, I'm going to do this with S apply. And there we see a two-dimensional vector. I think it would be a frame. And that is where we'll go ahead and stop with this.